sometimes it's Monday morning and you realize, at least I do, that I did not make any kind of meal plan for the week. What do you do when that happens? Well, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna go to your pantry, you're gonna go to your refrigerator, you're gonna go to your freezers, and you're just going to look through there, take a little inventory of what you have, and then make a meal plan from there. That's what I'm going to be doing this whole week because it's Monday. I woke up this morning and I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to call two different doctors, our dentist, is moving and completely canceled out on the kids dentist appointments which were for next week already <laughs> i have to get to the bank with sam i have to what else do i have to do i just woke up i was like the list it was just growing by minute this morning so anyway i did not have time to meal plan i'm jennifer this is a country life and we are going to do what i'm going to call pantry cooking this week this is just like flying by the seat of my pants figuring out what we're going to eat as we go just based on what I have. So guess what? Tonight we are going to have lasagna. This is pretty amazing that I'm able to pull this all together but yesterday some friends stopped over and they had actually made Italian sausage um, with venison and a pork butt roast and she told me <laughs> she told me how delicious it was and I asked for the recipe and not only did she bring me the recipe but she also brought me two pounds to try so I have one pound thawed here and that was kind of like the start I was like maybe we'll make spaghetti for supper I was just like I don't really want spaghetti so I went to the pantry and lo and behold the next thing I found was this open box of lasagna I don't know how many lasagna noodles are in there but it seems like about half a box so I figured that should work I went down to the basement and this I mean again this was just like Providence I went down there and I was digging around and there it was 2021 not even behind a bunch of things one jar of spaghetti sauce and then I was like oh I need Mrs. Dash and I knew I didn't have any but I do have this Portesi seasoning I know this is nothing like Mrs. Dash but it's gonna work so I'll add that instead of the Mrs. Dash I need a lot of mozzarella cheese I know this isn't quite enough, but I had this mozzarella cheese in the fridge. I had this four cheese Mexican, which I think between these two, it's actually gonna be plenty. And I even found an unopened pack of cheese as well, in case I need a little extra. In our garage fridge, there was a container, completely brand new container. Can I get that lid off one-handed? <laughs> there we go. It's a completely unopened container of cottage cheese. And that's it. That is how easy my lasagna recipe is. And then it just needs some water. So I'm gonna get all of this going. We're gonna pull this together into a supper tonight. I have another batch of, what are these aprons? And they're at the printer. They're actually finished. I need to pick them up. And I finally remembered to take my own apron in and have it printed. So. Going forward, at some point, whenever I get to the printer, you'll be able to see me wear my apron actually with the Since I'm in the Kitchen logo on it. So I'm super excited for that. All right, we're just gonna let this heat up a little bit and then get this. I don't think I'm gonna need any added fat. Oh, there is a hair. Ah, where did it go to? There we go. Okay. Now usually I would just use ground venison or if you wanted to ground hamburger, but since I have this pork sausage, that's what I'm gonna end up, or venison, actually venison pork sausage, this is what I'm gonna use today. The meat has just a couple more minutes before it's completely done. And so I'm going to head out to the garage fr freezer. And I am specifically looking for these little garlic naans. All right, that was a surprise. Anybody wanna tell me why I have sunglasses in the freezer? And then maybe who would have put them there? <laughs> oh, you can see I just left them there because that's just the kind of mom I am. We're also gonna head down to the basement freezer to see what we can find. Ooh, we've got Brussels sprouts, which sounds so good to me. Sweet potatoes, though, that sounds delicious to me. 
butternut squash blend. That sounds delicious to me. None of these my family would think sound delicious, though. How about this one, the Mediterranean vegetables? We're going to go with this one tonight. Okay, no, I see a different one down here, which I know. Nope, not that one. That was more sweet potatoes. Look at that. I think maybe they're going to like that. Asian seasoned medley. Okay, so let's talk about this now for a moment. If I were to have actually planned a lasagna supper for us, I would have looked and realized I didn't have Mrs. Dash. I would have put that on my meal plan. Or, I was sorry, I would have put that on my menu. I probably would have noticed that I had lasagna noodles and would have not counted them. And I would have put lasagna noodles on my list because I would have thought, well, you know, I probably need a few more. I probably would have put mozzarella cheese on my list because I would have said I don't have quite enough. I also most likely would have planned to make a homemade garlic bread or something like that and then would have been disappointed with myself because the day was busy and we did a whole lot of homeschool today. Uh, last week, again, was a pretty light week. And so today it was just like, like any Monday, I'm always ready to just like start with a bang and it's like, like a big... Like it's like a big do over or start over or you know you just feel like you're ready to just give it your all anyway I would have been disappointed because I would have forgotten to get the bread going earlier in the day and then what else oh I also would have put green beans because I always love to have green beans with lasagna and I'm out of home canned green beans and I don't have any green beans in the like just canned from the store and I don't have any frozen green beans, so I would have put green beans on the list. And look at all of those things that I would have bought, which we would have eaten, and eventually we would have eaten all of this. However, if you're trying to cut back maybe a month, you want to try to save a hundred bucks in your grocery bill or something like that, this is a great thing to do, is to just sort of open up your pantry, shop from the pantry, and make it happen. It's, it's always amazing what you can end up making from just the random ingredients in your pantry and freezers. I need to get the water in here. That is actually going to loosen up all of the yummy cooked on, what did people tell me that's called, the fond? It's gonna loosen that, oh, I can already tell it's loosened it all, all up. I'm also gonna put in my spaghetti sauce here, 32 ounces. What I should have done is I should have left a little water in there so that I could rinse this. Let's see, should I try it? Scoop some up. Oh, I didn't get enough. Okay. Put a little in there. Give it a little swirl. Come back over here. Rinse that out. I'm going to let this simmer for 10 minutes now. I decided I'm not going to, I think, I think I've decided that I'm not going to use the Italian seasoning because normally I would use like a completely unseasoned meat. And since this pork sausage is seasoned, I think there's gonna be enough seasoning. I'll taste it and then I'll get back to you with a final verdict as to if I think I need to add something or not. So while the meat simmers for 10 minutes, that gives me a little time to think about what we are going to do uh, for the next couple days. Tomorrow night, super easy. Maria and I will be home alone and we are going to make corn dogs and have some sort of, some kind of vegetable. And the corn dogs, thanks to Uncle Dan. <laughs> He wasn't supposed to leave those. If you're watching, you know you weren't supposed to leave all that stuff here, but he did. Okay, so we're going to eat the corn dogs tomorrow, and we will be very happy with that. And then I saw that I have some chow mein noodles, and these can get kind of rancid fairly quickly, I feel like. I probably should just keep them in the freezer. But anyway, I had these from just before Easter or something, and I thought, you know what? mock chop suey would be delicious. Now that's what my mom called it all the time. I know the last time I mentioned mock chop suey in one of my um, videos, I had a few people say, that is totally not the name for it. You know what? That's okay. When I say mock chop suey, I know what I mean. <laughs> and my family knows what I mean. And I know that I have cream of mushroom soup down here someplace. It's cream of chicken. That's cream of mushroom. So... Mock chop suey takes cream of mushroom. It might even take a can of cream of chicken. I'll have to pull up the recipe. But anyway, I'm just going to put these couple things. I'm going to put those things right on that shelf just to kind of remind me that that is what we're going to be having on Wednesday night. 
So all I have to do is go down and get a package of ground venison. And let me just see if it is in my first cookbook or is it in my second? I guess I never put that recipe into a cookbook, so I'll have to type that one out, put it in the description box for you guys. Okay, so here's the recipe. I'm gonna use ground venison and celery, which I have. I have water, I have cream of mushroom soup, I have salt and pepper, I have onions, I have chopped suey sauce, which is just soy sauce, I have rice, I have cream of chicken, you guys saw lots of that in there, and I have the chow mein noodles, so that's perfect. That is gonna make a perfect supper for Wednesday night, and I'm just gonna have to look. You saw I had other bags of vegetables down there. I'll put some vegetables with it, open up a couple cans of canned peaches or applesauce, and again, we'll have a great supper for Wednesday night, and I didn't have to buy any extra ingredients. Time is up for the simmering, and I tasted it, and it has plenty of Italian seasoning to it, so I'm not gonna add anything additional. Um, when we, when we serve it up, if someone thinks it needs a little salt or pepper, they can add that at the table. So usually when I make this lasagna, I will make like a one and a half or even a two times recipe, and I really load it up into a larger pan, but this is just a little smaller than a nine by 13, and this works really well. Um, if, if I'm really just going with the recipe and only using one pound of meat. so that the cheese doesn't stick to the foil when you take it off at the end. Just spray your foil right in the center there, right where it's gonna actually touch the cheese, and then just foil it like that. And that just ensures, or I shouldn't say it ensures it, but it does help um, the probability of, it come, of the foil coming off without all of the cheese pulling with it. Now I'm gonna put this in the oven at 350 degrees for one hour. And I always like to start lasagna early. I think, blah, 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 blah. I think lasagna is best if it can bake for the full hour and then you bring it out and you keep it covered for like another 15, even 20 minutes. It just sets up some of the juices kind of absorb into the noodles. Almost quarter to four right now, so I think that'll be perfect. If I have it in for an hour till quarter to five, and then it sits until a little after five, that'll be perfect. We can eat a little bit on the early side tonight, which is nice. All right, so the lasagna, it kind of overflowed a little bit, <laughs> but um, it's been resting here for about 20 minutes or maybe a little bit more, still really hot. And then I warmed up some of these non breads in the oven, and we have just microwave vegetables, the ones that I showed you that I was gonna make, seasoned something or another. And here is the, the foil. I just wanted to show you how spraying the foil, when you lift it off, it actually does not stick to the cheese. And this is Peter's plate. He wants to give us a look. Now, what kind of veggies are you gonna put on there? Um. <laughs> Use a spoon. Good morning, here it is already Wednesday morning. And last night, I didn't even end up showing our supper. Maria and I had corn dogs and some french fries <laughs> and milk. That was that was it. And we watched a movie and worked on putting together a photo album. All right, so here we are. It's Wednesday morning, and I wanted to get up early so that I could get my casserole ingredients all put together because Wednesday's a busy day for us, and when I get home in the evening, um, it would be time consuming and tedious to put this together and then to try to bake it as well because we are having um, what, what we always referred to as mak chop suey. So I'm just browning up a little over one and a half pounds of ground venison, a cup of diced celery, and two onions in some bacon fat. And once that's all brown, I will stir in a cup of water, a can of cream of mushroom soup, a half cup of uncooked long grain rice, four tablespoons of soy sauce, one can of cream of chicken soup, 
I will lightly salt and pepper it to taste. Then I will put that into a casserole dish, uh, a greased casserole dish. And what I'm going to do today is actually divide this into two because this makes a very large family sized casserole. And so I'm going to divide this in two, make half of it today, put the other one into the freezer for a later day. This is going to have to go for a little over an hour because you really want that rice to get well, well done. If you're putting it all together, an hour and 20 minutes is just right. But I'm doing half, so I'm going to check it at one hour. And then I will put the chow mein noodles on top, put it back into the oven uncovered this time, and just bake it for another 10 minutes until those chow mein noodles are crispy. It's time to prep for supper here. Actually, it was almost an hour ago. We have four minutes left on the mock chop suey before I put the, what are those called? The chow mein noodles on top. And look at what I ended up finding downstairs. I just totally missed it. I actually have probably about nine or 10 jars of green beans. And so I brought up green beans for tonight. We have just a couple nans left from the night we had the lasagna. I also have apples. I have more in the refrigerator. So I think I'm going to slice up apples, the naan, the green beans, and the mock chop suey for tonight's supper. Everything here I ended up finding on my pantry shelves and in my freezers. close. It is another day here now and I need to think of something for supper tonight and we're supposed to have decent weather like 60 degrees today at least get up to 60 in the afternoon and I thought it would be kind of nice to grill out some venison steak. So we are going to dig around for venison steak. Whoops. I see mini roasts and more mini roasts and more mini roasts. Okay. Maybe it's going to have to be a mini roast day. I bet there's steak under here. You know, that feels like a venison roast. I really didn't want to do lunch meat tonight. All right. Well, this is going to be a two hand job, so I'm going to have to dig around a little bit. All right, I also grabbed one of these packages of lunch meat because I realized that we ate up the whole casserole last night at supper. Um, no leftovers. So I grabbed that, and then I also found two pounds of venison steak here. That one says 2021. So I don't know how that one got buried down there, but I could not find the 2022 steak. I'm going to just set both of these actually in the sink right now because what I want is for this to thaw by lunch, which is in just a couple hours. And I want this one to thaw. I'm going to have to take it out a little bit later. Um, maybe put it into like a <clears throat> and put it into a little pan of some water so that it really starts to thaw. But we need to get back to schoolwork, and I just wanted to make sure that that was kind of ready to go. Apparently, at six o'clock, everyone is so hungry to serve up they just can't even wait here tonight. So, what we ended up doing instead of the venison steak because that just was not going to thaw. It it's just it's cold in the house. So anyway, the the turkey had finally thawed and so we're just I just toasted up in the oven um, buns toast the cheese we're doing the turkey and then over here we have some lettuce and pickles how do these chips taste and with that we are having some chips and the you like those chips mm -hmm. those are tasty aren't they and then we have the leftover cottage cheese from when we had the lasagna on Monday night and then here we are we're also having some cuties so turkey? that is turkey it is called Peter it's called home style turkey so just a simple supper put together with ingredients that I found in the fridge pantry and other places <laughs> Well, we are already at the last day of the week of uh, just cooking from my pantry. Not that I don't cook from my pantry often, but I just kind of wanted to do, um, I just wanted to show you how sometimes it can just be super simple meals and it's still delicious and warms the hearts and bellies of your family. Okay, so for tonight's supper, we are going to be having fish. So we have 
all of this fish here. We have some fish here that Peter caught. And anyway, we just thawed all of this and we're gonna make this for supper tonight. I just scrubbed up these potatoes and I'm gonna be doing half potatoes. It's a really simple thing to do. Let me show you how I make half potatoes. I have a dark pan and I'm gonna put plenty of oil on there. Whoop, I better get my oven set to bake. And we are gonna set this at 400. And then I'm just gonna season this oil with a lot of black pepper. And we're gonna keep it super simple tonight, just Lowry seasoning salt. So plenty of Lowry seasoning salt all over the oil. I then slice my potatoes in half wherever I'm gonna get the most surface area. And I just smear the oil all around on a dark cookie sheet here or baking pan and put the potatoes down. Alright, I have plenty of space in here so I'm just going to separate them a little bit here. I'm going to put these in the oven for at least 45 minutes so I can tell that these are done when I go to lift them up and they kind of release naturally from the pan and I flip them over and they're nice and golden brown on the one side and kind of crisped up a little bit. So that's it, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. It really just depends on how hungry you are, how hurry, how in a hurry you are to eat. The 45 minute timer just went off and this is what I mean. If these were not all the way done, they, when I lifted it like this, they wouldn't just lift off. What would happen is the potato would get stuck onto the pan and yeah, that's what would happen. You get the potato stuck onto the pan rather than be nice and crispy like that. So I'm just gonna put these back in the oven with the oven turned off because Warren is just getting the oil hot for the fish and we are using this here, this 906 Outdoors cooking, what does that say? Cooking wild seasonings. I thought that it needed a little bit more salt, so you added in half teaspoon. a half teaspoon of salt into this. There's the fish. We have fish from Uncle Dan. Yep, fish from Uncle Dan. We have fish from Peter over on that side. So there's our crappies. There's up north crappies. <laughs> wow. And then, like, what about like that? Like, what about that big? And Number then, seven. yeah, and then, I'll float it. And then, uh, after I snap my line on that, so I can't do mine. Yeah, it's kind of Serving up something good there? Yes, sir. Okay. So here's a piece of bluegill. There's two cups on the table. <laughs> Is that good? Mm-hmm. It mm. all looks delicious. Like. And Maria's plate. Am I between Peter and Joseph? Mm -hmm. 